Yeah, I know. The door still squeaks. I'll get to that. But I'm sure a lot of people have seen this area many times in the last few months. And you should notice slight little changes, little improvements that I've been working on. I mean, there's a support beam up here that wasn't here before. The walls have been stripped. They're almost ready for insulation. But there's other things that I've been working on and I haven't really documented in a past video. But I'm going to do that today. And as a matter of fact, things are going to be looking up. Starting now, because if you look up, you'll see some changes you may not have noticed before. But before I get to those, let's go back to when I took off the ceiling boards and exposed the rafters. The cabin originally had a low ceiling that I found too confining. So I opened it up with a little force. It certainly made a big visual impact. However, the dead trees needed a little thinning out. One thing I have a reasonable amount of is patience. But one thing I do not have a lot of is space, especially in the cabin right now because I've got all these tools all over the place and building materials, plus all the stuff that was in the cabin before that I wanted to keep. And every time I have to work in one room, I gotta move everything out and put it somewhere else. And then I gotta work over here and I gotta put it back. It's just madness. I need space. And I used to have some space up there. But when I sealed up the attic, can't get up there anymore. And even the bathroom is almost up to the ceiling with stuff, so that doesn't help me much. I think I need to open this up by taking out these beams or uh, joists, whatever you want to call them, every second one, which the only purpose for those was to hold up the ceiling. Well, the ceiling's not there anymore, so they can come down. The trusses stay, but these ones here really have no purpose. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna cut them all the way back because I still need them in this section, but I'm just gonna chop them off here. That'll give me a little bit of a ledge that comes out and I don't know, I can put cool stuff up there, but it'll open it up so I can get a ladder up and I can go put up stuff and make it a storage space again. But first I needed to make sure that the cut boards didn't fall on me, so I tied a rope underneath. That didn't work so well. Next I zigzagged the rope in between the joists. That worked a little better. But by the time I cut the last joist, I'd smartened up a little and screwed a board underneath the joists on each side as shown in the right. best technique by far. With almost two feet of room between the trusses, I now had that much needed space and I filled it up real quickly. Well that brings you a little bit up to date as to what I've done up there in the past, but let me show you a new feature that's bringing this whole project to new heights. My loft ladder. Come on and see. Now there is just enough room when on the top step to still stand up straight, at least for me. However, once I get in here, it is kind of cramped. And uh, yeah, it's not really meant as a loft. It was an attic and it was kind of a scary one at that. It looks pretty scary up here. However, I'm determined I can make a loft out of this. Now the first thing I've got to do is work on the floor support because these are just the lower cords of the original trusses. They weren't meant to support the weight of a person, only meant to support the roof. And so what I've done so far is I've had some additional pieces cut 
See right behind here, this is one of the original supports. There's every 12 inches there was one. But I've had some new wood cut. And what I'm going to do is sister up to each one every two feet. Uh, you know, nail those together. Make sure it's uh, a lot more support. And that will give me enough to put in, are you ready? A bed, a loft bed, because I have... 43 inches between the king post and uh, these struts that uh, that's just enough for a twin bed So once I get the additional support done and I've also done other things for support the uh, beam across here So there's good end support and I put some mending plates on These king posts so they're a little stronger as well But once I've got that done then I can also start putting floorboards up and it's gonna start turning into a loft. So let's go back down and I'll show you how I built the ladder. The sides are deck boards, one by six. Uh, I think they're about nine feet long in this particular case. And the steps are two by six, so they're a little thicker, one and a half inches. And the distance between the stairs is 10 inch. I found that comfortable. Now there's many ways you can put this together. The way I chose was screws, but not deck screws, rugged structural screws, RSS. I used two structural screws each side. Some may prefer three, but I'm okay with two. And if I have to remove a step for any reason, I can just unscrew it. Nice and solid. However, it's light, and that's important because when I don't want it down, when I'm not using the loft, up it comes. Locks in place, out of the way. I'll probably change that in a future date, but for now that works well. But let me show you the hinge. Now the top part of the ladder is rounded so that when it comes up, it doesn't interfere with the boards in behind. And there's also going to be some boards in the top as well. And dead center are two bolts. That's what it actually pivots on. These are carriage bolts, five inches in my case. And I've also put some additional support up here. There's a board right here. And there's a board here so that when I drill the hole for the carriage bolt, the hole is longer. I don't want the bolt like wobbling back and forth because the hole's too thin or it'll just wear down. Um, I've got nuts on the end and in between these two spaces here, I have two washers. So most of the friction is between two washers, not the wood. But there's not going to be a lot of wear. It's occasionally I'm going to lift it up and down. Um, I'm probably, it's probably not going to wear down at least for a couple of years, but I still like to improve the design. But back in the loft, it was hammer time. Not going anywhere. As for the floorboards, I used new wood that I just stained with a little steel wool and vinegar. Well, laying down the floorboards was pretty easy. It was more difficult just to get them up here. However, now I've got to do a little bit more customization because there's the areas in between the trusses I'm going to have to custom fit. In the spaces between the struts, I first had to add a few support pieces made from old scrap wood and nail them in place. Then the new floorboard was placed on top. I'd like to fasten all these boards in place, but there's still wiring to be done underneath. So I have to leave access to the electricians. 
but there were at least some sections I could nail down. Like this new end platform. Oh, that's it. It's too hot. I can't work up here anymore. Ooh. But I've got a place up here, a little extension for storage or to put knickknacks on. And the main loft is here. I still have to do some ventilation because, <laughs> man, do I need it. But at least I have a loft. I'm not sleeping up here tonight, that's for sure. Whew, I want to go somewhere cool. With my indoor task for the period done, it was time to hit the great outdoors for another one. I needed to work on the ease trough, so I removed it to do a little adjusting. But while I was up there, I remembered, hey, I never looked inside the soffits. No harm in doing an inspection, right? When I removed the lower board of the soffit, it's kind of dark under there, which I expect is normal. However, that's not normal dark. That's very dark. And that is solid dark. Watch what happens when I put my crowbar in there. Oh. Gross! Great! All I needed was another rental nightmare as I watched a mass of black gunk fall out of the soffit. Was it full of bat guano, or even worse? As I continued to explore from the other end, it was just as bad. Yeah. But soon I found another concern as fluffy stuff was pouring out. Asbestos, perhaps? But before running to the woods in despair, I had a closer look at that vile pile. Instead of finding bat poop, I found thousands of tiny little spheres that looked to me like choke cherry pits. I think some adventurous squirrels had been stashing their harvest of pine seeds and cherry seeds for decades up there. Sorry, guys. You've been busted. As for the fluffy stuff, I had one idea to narrow down its identity. Just set it on fire. Asbestos does not burn, but this stuff definitely reacts to flame. I added a sample of pink insulation and was happy to see it reacted the same way. Mystery solved as the squirrels had probably made a bed of attic insulation in the soffit. A few taps with a stick and the soffits were cleared. I'm definitely going to add vents to this. So looking up and getting a face full of soffit crud was not the greatest experience of my day. But I cleaned it up, I can move on now. And the reason I was up there in the first place is because I wanted to change the direction of the eaves troughs. They were sloping towards the other side of the building, but I already have an eaves trough on the other side that's facing that direction. I think I need one on this side because that way I can utilize that rainwater for other things. And the first thing I want to use it for is uh, a rain barrel because I do not have a well here and uh, there's not really a fresh water stream. Uh, sometimes there's a little bit of runoff, I get a little bit of a stream, but I'm in a, it's in a drought right now and there hasn't been much water this summer at all. So I really need to capture whatever rainwater I can get. Now I already had a rain barrel. This was with the cabin when I bought it. It's already, the lid's already been cut off. It looks pretty clean. I think I can use it. And I'm going to use this corner here 
I've got some uh, cinder blocks down there. I've got about seven of them just to raise the height. So, that's my start. Now, there's a lot more I've got to do with this, and I'm going to experiment a little bit. This is not your typical how to do a rain barrel uh, kind of thing because it's not, I'm, I don't have the right materials I want, and so I have to use what I've got. Let me give you an example of what it is I have and how I'm going to make it work. Now the first thing I'm going to need is a lid because yeah I can just direct the rainwater right into the barrel but it's also going to take any leaves and crud and it's going to be a breeding ground for mosquitoes so you definitely need a lid. I went to the hardware store and the best I could find was a water heater drain pan. This is 26 inch. It was ten dollars and uh, that should do it's good enough and it's black so that'll keep uh, some of the sunlight out as well now as far as draining down I have the original downspout and uh, I just got to cut off a little bit uh, I did look online as you know how other people do uh, you know work with their downspouts for a rain barrel and there's these rain barrel diverters for like 40 or 50 dollars like i'm not going like i'm not gonna do that that's a waste of 50 dollars i mean the path is ready right there i don't even need brackets or anything i just got to make sure i've got a screw holding that on and then it can go right into the rain barrel but i do need something on the lid just to keep this from sliding down and uh, make sure i've got all the water going down um and that's where i improvise because I have a juice container which I will make a funnel and in the funnel I need a little bit of screen so that that'll screen out the leaves so got to drill a hole in there now as far as a faucet goes I did pick up an actual brass rain barrel spigot I think call it a spigot but I'm gonna call it a faucet I'm gonna call it Farah there we go and uh, uh, where do you put the faucet? Now, some people prefer it right at the bottom, but I, that's where all the crud is. If anything sort of starts accumulating, it's going to be at the bottom. So I'm going to put it, say, uh, two-thirds down should be fine. I didn't have the right size hole saw for this, so I used a Forstner bit instead. I used a sanding drum to bring the hole up to size. I got it to a diameter that was wide enough to start the first threads and with a little force the spigot took hold. If you're worried about leaks you might also want to try some nylon threaded tape but I think I had a good tight fit. My do-it-yourself funnel was only temporary, as the plastic will probably get brittle at some point. I cut off the end with a sharp knife. I bent the screen into a bowl shape and covered the edges with duct tape. After inserting the mesh filter in the funnel, I used the bottle threads to screw the assembly into the hole. The last drill was for the overflow. I've drilled the hole a little bit small. Doesn't fit. I want to make a perfect fit so I start small and then I'll use this old bastard file to make it bigger. So come on you old bastard, make it fit. For the overflow outlet, I use two ABS pipe adapters that are threaded together. Since it's the overflow, I'm not really concerned if it leaks a little. Well now that I have an overflow outlet, the rest should be pretty easy. I've got an elbow, some ABS pipe, and I just have to point it downwards. That should do it, right? No, because what that'll do 
is it puts all the water coming out in this corner below this pier. I don't want to do that. I need it away from the cabin. So what I have to do is actually run 30 feet of ABS pipe right to the back. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's the only way to do it. I can't really put it around that way because then I'll have the ABS pipe directly in the path to the deck. So, only one way to go, and that's downhill. I did use ABS cement for the length of ground pipe, as I don't expect I'll need it to come apart later on. As for the overflow fitting, just the parts to the elbow get glued, as I still need to remove the downspout pipe when the rain barrel comes down for the winter. Well, I've got the downspout hooked up, got a rock, keep the lid from blowing off, got the overflow, and I got Farrah Fawcett, but what I don't have is anything in the rain barrel. I need it to rain. Please rain. I hope she heard me. I also installed another rain barrel I got for free that held windshield wiper fluid. This is not for drinking, only to water the compost bin. Now on a more sad note, I planted three blueberry bushes in the spring and they were doing fantastically. I planted two on the hill and one down by the campfire. And I even got a wonderful first harvest of a few berries. Unfortunately, when the heat spell came and everything dried up in its intense heat, like today, it is the hottest day of the entire year. And the blueberries, they're shriveled up. No more, no more harvest for me. That's a little bit frustrating. And oh yeah, you remember Boris? Boris the spider was my furry little helper who pointed out problems a couple of videos ago. But sadly, he did not survive the ant spring. Sorry Boris, I guess I'm not good at keeping pets. But there is a longhorn beetle that likes a tickle. But after that, he's on his own. Well, although it's still way too hot up here, I had to try it with the cot. Because a loft isn't a loft without a bed. Oh yeah. It's not too cramped, really space for storage there but yeah it needs ventilation so i'm not going to stay up here long i just wanted to talk about costs now the ladder cost me 113 dollars and 24 cents and that's not too much and that was mostly because of the price of lumber right now the big surprise was the rain barrels two rain barrels although they were both free i still ended up spending 174 dollars and 58 cents because of that ABS pipe. That was close to $100 just for ABS pipe and fitting. So even though the barrels are free, it still actually was the most expensive thing because the only other expense in this video were the floorboards and they were about $104. So when you add it all up, it comes to $391.82, which is about $300 US. But the last video, I didn't mention the cost of the compost toilet, which was the seat, $52. So the total cost uh, in the two videos was $443.80. That means the grand total I've spent on this renovation to date is $12,400 or about $9,600 US. Oh, it is hot up here. <laughs> I totally, totally got to work on ventilation. Whew, I got to lay down. Oh my God. Yes, the rain has come. 
Oh, that feels so good. I'm gonna get some rainwater, finally. Cool off a little. Whew. Oh, I love it. Yeah. But it was just a thunderstorm and the hot sun returned. Now one of the best ways to cool off after a really hot day is to take your shoes off and your socks and dip your feet in that nice cool ocean. Oh, oh that's heaven. Oh that's so nice. Oh, I probably killed a few fish but it was worth it. Ah. I hope you enjoyed this video and check out my others as well. I'm just gonna cool off for a bit. Oh yeah. <laughs>